there are many different phases of sequence comparison in biology and we will now learn some of them. We'll ask first the question of what is wrong with the naive scoring models that we used for the longest common subsequence problem when we scored all matches by one. We saw the a biologically adequate alignment of adenylation demands constructed by Mara Hales, but this alignment is not the optimal longest common subsequence of this adenylation demand. At the bottom of the slide, there is actually longest common subsequence. It has more matches, but it is biologically completely wrong. So the question arises, how can we modify the scoring for computing alignments in such a way that we avoid frivolous matches that you can see in the bottom alignment on this slide. In the current primitive scoring, we simply compute score as the number of matches. Let's change it and let's also take into account penalties for mismatches and insertion and deletions. So we give premium one to every match and in our alignment game, we now give penalty mu to every mismatch and penalty sigma to every indel. And as a result, the score in our alignment game changes. Before it was 4, now it is minus 7. How to find optimal solution of the alignment gain and optimal alignment under this model? In this case, we essentially constructed the scoring matrix, which is 5 by 5 matrix, which describe the score for matching every two symbols in the extended alphabet, which consists of nucleotides plus the space symbol. And we can design whatever arbitrary scoring matrices. For example, I design an arbitrary matrix here, and we can use it to play the alignment game. Uh, in fact, Biology invest, biologists invest a lot of efforts into designing adequate scoring matrices, uh, particularly scoring matrices for amino acid sequences. And the goal of the scoring matrices is to reflect the mutation propensity of different uh, amino acids. For example, amino acid Y often mutates into F and that's why it gets high score, plus 7, but rarely mutates in some other amino acids, for example, proline, and in this case, it gets actually penalty, minus 5. And this is an example of a scoring matrix that biologists use. Now, in the case we work with scoring matrices, how our dynamic programming recurrency change? Instead of recurrency shown on this slide, we simply have the following recurrency, Sij equal to four different possibilities depending on whether we are computing score for uh, insertion, deletion, match or mismatch as shown on this slide. And the scores of edges in the alignment graph change accordingly as shown on this slide. Or alternatively, we can for very general scoring matrix, we simply can write three terms recurrency where uh, green, blue, and red alternatives correspond to uh, vertical, horizontal, and diagonal edges. And global alignment problem that we want to solve is the following one. Given strings V and W and a matrix scorer, we want to find an alignment of this string uh, whose alignment score, as defined by the scoring matrix, is maximum among all possible alignments of these strings. Global alignment is a good model for some biological sequence comparison problems, but a bad model for some others. Uh, and I'll give you an example of Hamer box genes to illustrate the challenges of biological sequence comparison. Two genes in different species may be similar over short conserved regions and dissimilar over remaining regions. For example, Hamer box genes have short regions 
called the Homer domain that is highly conserved among species varying from human to fly. But global alignment of homeobog genes would not reveal homeo domain because it would most likely pass through completely arbitrary region of the sequences since homeo domains are short subsegments of homeobog genes. How can we find this important biological similarity that however do not extend over the entire length of sequences and thus uh, in, this, in the case of search for these short sequences, the global alignment fails. At this slide, you see two alignments, and the question arises, which alignment is better? The alignment on the top actually has a higher score, but the alignment at the bottom has lower score, but more biologically relevant, because it shows a very strong match of short sequences. How can we find this alignment despite the fact that global alignment may miss it. And search for such short segments within sequences that ex exhibit similarity is called the local alignment problem. So in this case there are two possible alignments in the alignment graphs. The alignment on the top is biologically correct, but the alignment in the middle is actually a random alignment that, however, has a higher score from the perspective of global alignment and therefore hides from us the biologically relevant alignment. Uh, so what I want to do is to somehow find the short substrings of the entire strings that exhibit high similarity. How do I do this? There is a very simple way to search for short similar strings within longer strings. We can simply try all possible pair of strings from two sequences and each such pair corresponds to a rectangle in the alignment graph. Here is one of the rectangle. But there are so many such rectangles that this approach of course becomes impractical where since search for optimal global alignment within each smaller rectangle requires quadratic time and therefore uh, overall the running time will become very large. What can we do? To, to come up with a practical local alignment algorithm. The first thing we need to do is to formulate the local alignment problem. The input is strings V and W and a scoring matrix score. And output as is substrings of the entire strings V and W whose global alignment as defined by score is maximum among all global alignments of all substrings of V and W. My proposal for solving this problem, let's introduce free taxi rides through the alignment graph. Indeed, if we were able to start in the source and travel freely to the start of the conserved fragment and then take another free taxi ride from the end of conserved fragment to the destination, final node of the alignment graph, then we will be able to score these interesting segments uh, by taking zero cost of taxi ride to the beginning of this fragment, then real cost of the alignment of the fragment, and then plus another zero, which is the cost of another taxi ride. You may ask how in the world we can take taxi rides through the alignment graph. Well, the whole point of introducing this concept of Manhattan uh, kind cities and traveling in them is that they are free to build whatever uh, Manhattan-like grids uh, for solving our biological problems. And in this case, what is a free taxi ride? It's simply adding extra edges of weight zero to our alignment graph. And since we are free to build whatever Manhattan we want, we can, of course, we are at liberty of introducing this taxi ride. So let's see how our graph changed. What we need to do to implement this free taxi ride? We need to add edges from the source to any other node and it will be roughly quadratic number of edges. We also need to add edges from every node to the same, once again, quadratic number of edges. So the number of edges in the graph remains quadratic and therefore our algorithm will be fast.
And uh, in the end, how our dynamic programming recurrency changed for the local alignment. Before, we had three possibilities corresponding to three ways to enter a node. Uh, by vertical edge, by horizontal edge, and by diagonal edge. Now, there is one more possibility. We can take a free taxi ride to the node. So now there are four possibilities for entering the, every node. Which means that we need to add the fourth term in this recurrency, which is the weight of edge from 0, 0 to ij. And the weight of this edge, since our taxi rides are free, is 0. And that's the only change that we need to implement to make our local alignment algorithms practical and fast. And we now move to the problem of defining adequate insertion and deletion penalties in sequence alignment.